What will Christ do when he comes back? There are so many misconceptions about this event. So many believe in the rapture, that when Christ comes back, he will whisk them from the earth and take them to heaven. But the rapture is not in the Bible. It's just wishful thinking. I believe that many believe in the rapture because they're hoping to avoid the trouble that they know is coming on the earth. And they're hoping that the rapture or that they will be saved and not have to go through the bad things that will happen in the earth. If you've seen or watched any of my older videos, you know that World War III is the next thing to happen on the prophetic timeline. So the question is, when Christ comes, what will he do? How would we figure this out? We could read the scriptures, but one thing we can look at is, what did David do when the kingdom was established in his name? After he ran from Saul and struggled with Saul and the kingdom was finally established after Saul's death, what did he do? Because what he did is very similar to what Christ will do. So let's read 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. Wherefore thou art great, the Most High, for there is none like thee, neither is there any Elohim besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation is in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom Elohim went to redeem for a people to himself, to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemed to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed thyself to thy people Israel, to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Most High, art become their Elohim. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, for thou, Most High, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing, and let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. These verses from Samuel chapter 2, verse 7, express a profound praise and the recognition of Elohim's uniqueness. He's the only one, and his greatness, by highlighting his unparalleled nature and his special relationship he has with his people, the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In verse 20, David acknowledges Elohim's unparalleled greatness and the fact that there is no other person beside him. It also reflects the unique status of Israel as his chosen people, redeemed from Egypt and set apart from all nations. He acknowledges that Israel has been separated by the Most High to be a special people unto himself. In verse 29, there's a prayer for Elohim's blessing on David's house and a trust that Elohim will keep his promise to keep David's family as being the ruler of his people forever. The Most High established the kingdom in David's name and the decree that his children after him would sit on the throne forever. So what David did after the kingdom was established in his name is what Christ would do. So what we were reading was in chapter 7 of 2 Samuel. So now when we go to chapter 8, what did David do? 2 Samuel chapter 8 verse 1. And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methagama out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured he to put to death, and with one full line to keep alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river of Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. And David hoofed all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for an hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became his servants to David and brought gifts. And the Most High preserved David wheresoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Barothai, cities of Hazadezer, King David took exceeding much brass. And when Toai, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten all the hosts of Hadadezer, then Toai sent Joram his son to King David to salute him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hazadezer and had smitten him. For Hazadezer had wars with Toai, and Joram brought him the vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, which King David did dedicate unto the Most High with silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he subdued, and of Syria, and of Moab, and of the children of Ammon, and the Philistines, and of Amalek, and of the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Rohab, king of Zobah. And he put garrisons in Edom, throughout all Edom put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants, and the Most High preserved David wherever he went. These verses in 2 Samuel chapter 8 describe the military victories by King David over all the enemies of Israel leading to the expansion of his kingdom and the establishment of his dominance in the region. David captured significant chariots, horsemen, and footmen. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to assist Hadadezer, David defeats them 
He killed 20,000 men, subsequently established garrisons in Damascus, making the Syrians his subjects and receiving tribute from them. David killed many and the survivors became his servants. But that's exactly what Christ will do. He will kill many and the survivors will become his servants. M Matthew chapter 24 verse 30 And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. When Christ will return, the tribes or the families of the earth will mourn, because Christ will do what David did. He will smite the children of the enemies of Israel, but it will be much worse this time around. Luke chapter 19 verse 26. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and kill before me. As David killed many when he came, and was the rulership was established, Christ will kill that many more. All the people who refused to make him king, that, were, that fought against him, because when Christ comes, there will be a war going on, and the people will fight against him. All those people who did not want him to reign will be killed. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 Behold he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. When you read verses like this, you know when Christ comes, it's not going to be any good to the families that live on the earth. And it says all kindred shall wail, in other words, cry because of him. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. When Christ comes, he's going to judge and make war. When we read other verses in other books in the book of Ezra, we see that Christ will come during the middle of a war, and he will make war with them that are on the earth. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31 when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them, one from another, as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And the king shall say unto them on the right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The goats are the people who will fight against Christ. But all nations shall be gathered before him. So all the Ammonites, Moabites, all the people we read about in the Bible are still all here on the earth. The Bible is about bloodlines. And those bloodlines are all still here. When Christ comes back, after the war is over, all nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them. Everybody will have to go back to their own lands that we read about in the Old Testament. The goats will be on the left and they will be killed. But Israelites will inherit the kingdom from that point on. The kingdom belongs to Israel. We have to combine what we read here and with the Old Testament and get one understanding. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 10. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy wall, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor had I mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentile, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. When Christ comes back, and the nations are all before him, they shall be separated, and go back to the lands that we read in the Old Testament. And when they are in those lands, they shall come up yearly to keep the feasts, and they will bring gifts, and it will be a continual parade of nations coming to bring their tax money or their gifts to Christ and to the children of Israel. That's why the gates won't be shut day nor night. It will be a continual parade and those other nations will be servants. That's the way it works, just like we read under King David. So if we go back and we compare what we read under King David, verse 14, And he put garrisons in Edom throughout all Edom, put he garrisons, and all they became David's servants. Verse 6, Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David, and brought gifts. And the Most High preserved David wheresoever he went. That's exactly what we read in Isaiah. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto, the, unto thee the forces of the Gentile, and that their kings may be brought. What Christ did and what David did are going to be very similar.
The similarity between these verses lie in the theme of dominion and the consequences of acceptance or rejection of the dominion. So anybody who rejected King David was smitten. Anybody who rejects Christ will be smitten. David's military and political actions foreshadow the ultimate spiritual and internal dominion prophesied in Isaiah when Christ will reign over the children of Israel and all other nations. And those nations must acknowledge the sovereignty or face ruin. In both cases, the establishment of dominion and the expectation of loyalty and service are central, reflecting a divine principle of authority and the governance that spans from the temporal reign of David to the eternal reign of the King or the Messiah or Christ. Christ or Yeshua will be reigning at that time. The difference between David and Christ is that Christ will be eternal or David's dominion was temporary. So to sum this all up, Christ's behavior will be similar to what we read about in Samuel with David. It's important for us as followers of the Most High to always accept the truth, accept what we read, make the connections, and embrace the teachings that we read about. Otherwise, we will seem silly. Christ will rule and will restore authority to the Most High only, but under him will be the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the other nations or all the other people, those groups will be under the dominion of the children of Israel forever. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.